from around the globe. It's theCUBE with digital coverage of enterprise data automation. An event series brought to you by IO Tahoe. Okay, we're back. Welcome back to Data Automated. AJ Vahora is CEO of IO Tahoe. AJ, good to see you. How are things in London? Things are doing well. Things are doing well. We're um, we're making progress. So good to see you. Hope you're doing well and pleasure being back here on the queue. Yeah, it's always great to talk to you. We're talking enterprise data automation. As you know, our, with our, our within our community, we've been pounding the whole data ops conversation. A little different yeah. though. We're, we're gonna we're gonna dig into that a little bit. But let's start with AJ. How you've seen the response to COVID, and I'm especially interested in the role that data has played in this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone's uh, adapting both uh, socially um, and and in business. The customers that I speak to um, day in, day out that, that we partner with, um, they're busy adapting their businesses to serve their customers. It's very much a game of um, ensuring that we can serve our customers to help their customers. And, you know, the adaptation that's happening here is um, trying to be more agile, trying to be more flexible. Um, and there's a lot of pressure on data, a lot of demand on data to deliver more value to the business to serve that customer. Yeah, I mean, data, machine intelligence, and cloud are, are really three huge factors that have helped organizations in, in this pandemic. And, and you know, the, the machine intelligence or AI piece, that's what automation is all about. How do you see automation helping organizations evolve maybe faster than they thought they might have to. For sure, I think um, the necessity of these times, um, as, as I said, there's a lot of demand on doing something with data. Data, um, a, lot of, a lot of businesses talk about being data driven. Um, it's interesting, I sort of look behind that when we work with our customers and it's all about the customer. You know, the, my peers, CEOs, uh, investors, shareholders, the common theme here is, is the customer and that customer experience starts and ends with, with data. Being able to move from a point that is um, reacting to what the customer is expecting and taking it to that step forward where you can be proactive to serve what that customer's expectation to. And, that's definitely come alive now with the, um, uh, the current time. Yeah, so as I said, we've been talking about data ops a lot, the idea being DevOps applied to the data pipeline. But, but mm -hmm. talk about enterprise data automation. What is it to you and how is it different from data ops? Yeah, great question, thank you. I, um, I think we're all familiar. We've got more and more awareness uh, around DevOps. Uh, as it's applied to uh, processes, methodologies that have become more mature over the past five years around DevOps, of managing change, managing um, application life cycles, managing software development. Um, DevOps, you know, has been great for breaking down those silos between different roles, functions, and bringing people together to to collaborate. And you know, we definitely see that those tools, those methodologies, those processes, that kind of thinking, um, lending itself to data with data op is, is exciting. We're excited about that and shifting the focus from being IT versus business users to, you know, who are the data producers and who are the data consumers? And in a lot of cases, it can sit in many different lines of business. So with data op, those methods, those tools, those processes, what we look to do is build on top of that with data automation. It's the, it's the, the nuts and bolts of the, the algorithms, the, the models behind machine learning, the, the functions, that's where we invest our, our R&D. And bringing that into build on top of the, the methods, the, the ways of thinking that break down those silos, and injecting that automation into the business processes that are going to drive a business to serve its customer. It's um, a layer 
beyond DevOps, data ops, they can get to, to that point where the way I like to think about it is, um, is the automation behind the automation. We can take, I'll give you an example of a, um, a bank where we've done a lot of work to make, move them into accelerating their digital transformation. And what we're finding is that as we're able to automate the jobs related to data and managing that data and serving that data, that's going into them as a as a business, automating their processes for their customer. Um, so it's it, it's definitely having a compound effect. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, data ops for a lot of people is is somewhat new. The, the whole DevOps, the data ops thing is is good, and it's a nice framework, good methodology. There's obviously a level of automation in there and collaboration across different roles. But it sounds like you're talking about sort of supercharging it, if you will, the automation yeah. behind the automation. You know, organizations talk about being data driven. You hear that sort of thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will sit back and say, we don't make decisions without data. Okay, but really being data driven is, is there's a lot of aspects there. There's cultural, but there's also putting data at the core of your organization, understanding how it affects monetization. And as you know well, uh, silos have been built up, whether it's through m a you know, data sprawl, uh, outside data sources. So I'm interested in your thoughts on what data-driven means and specifically how, how IO Tahoe plays there. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be happy to talk that through, David. We've, um, we've come a long way in, in the last three or four years. We started out with automating some of those simple um, to codify um, but have a high impact on an organization across a data lake, across a data warehouse, those data related tasks that help classify data. And a lot of our original patents and IP portfolio that we've built up is, is very much around that. Automating, classifying data across different sources and then being able to serve that for some purpose. So originally, you know, some of those simpler um, challenges that we help our, our customers solve um, around data privacy. You know, I've got a huge data lake here. I'm a, a telecoms business. So I've got millions of su subscribers. Um, quite often, a chief data office challenge is how do I cover the operational risk here where um, I've got so much data, I need to simplify my approach to automating, classifying that data. Reason is, we can't do that manually, we can't throw people at it. And the, the scale of that is, is prohibitive. Quite often, if you were to do it manually, by the time you've got a good picture of it, it's already out of date. So in starting with those, those simple challenges that we've been able to address, we've then gone on and built on that to say, what else do we serve? What else do we serve for the chief data officer, chief marketing officer, and, and the CFO? And in these times um, where those um, decision makers are looking for, have, have a lot of choices in the, the platform options that they take, the, the tooling, they're very much looking for you know, that Swiss army knife. Being able to do one thing really well is, is great, but more and more, where that cost pressure challenge is coming in. It's about how do we um, offer more across the organization, bring in those business, lines of business uh, activities that depend on data. So not just with IT. Mm -hmm. So we like, in theCUBE sometimes we like to talk about, okay, what is it and then how does it work and what's the business impact? We kind of covered what it is. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get into the tech a little bit in terms of how it works. and. Um, I think we have a graphic here that, that gets into that a little bit. So guys, if you'd bring that up. I, I wonder, AJ, if you could tell us kind of what is the secret sauce behind IO Tahoe? And if you could take us through this slide. Sure, I mean, right there in the middle, that the heart of what we do, it is you know, the, the intellectual property uh, that we've built up over time that takes from heterogeneous data sources, your Oracle relational database, your, your mainframe, your data lake and increasingly APIs and, and devices that produce data. And 
now creates the ability to automatically discover that data, classify that data. After it's classified, then have the ability to form relationship across those different uh, source systems, silos, different lines of business. And once we've automated that, then we can start to do some cool things, such as put some context and meaning around that data. So it's moving it now from being data driven and increasingly where well, we have um, really smart, bright people in our customer organizations who want to do uh, some of those advanced knowledge tasks, data scientists and uh, you know, quants in some of the banks that we work with. The, um, the onus is on then putting everything we've done there with automation, pacifying it, relationship, understanding the data quality, the policies that you can apply to that data and putting it in context. Once you've got the ability to empower a, a professional who's using data, um, to be able to put that data in context and search across the, the entire enterprise estate, then, um, then they can start to do some exciting things and piece together the, the, the tapestry, the fabric across their, their different system. It could be CRM, ERP systems such as SAP, uh, and some of the newer cloud databases that we work with. Snowflake is a great one. Yeah, so so this is you're describing sort of one of the one of the reasons why there's so many stovepipes in organizations because data is kind of locked into these silos of these applications. Now I also want to point out that you know previously to do discovery, to do that classification that you talked about, to form those relationships, to, to glean context from data, a lot of that, if not most of that, in some cases, all of that would have been manual. And of course, it's out of date so quickly. Nobody wants to do it because it's it's so hard. So this again is where automation comes into the to the to the to the idea of really becoming data driven. Sure, I mean the the efforts. If we if I look back, um, maybe five years ago, we had a, a prevalence of data lake technologies at, at the mm -hmm. cutting edge, and those have started to converge and move to some of the cloud platforms that we work with, such as Google and AWS, and. I think very much as as you've said it, those manual attempts to try and uh, grasp what is such a complex challenge at scale uh, quickly runs out of steam, because once um, once you've got your hat, once you've got your fingers on the details of um, what's what's in your data estate, it's changed. You know, you've onboarded a new customer, you've signed up a new partner, um, a customer has, you know adopted a, a new product that you've just launched and that 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 slew of data keeps keeps coming so it's keeping pace with that the only answer really is is some form of automation and what we've found is if we can tie automation with what i said before the the expertise the um the subject matter expertise that sometimes goes back many years within an organization's people that augmentation between machine learning, AI, and and that knowledge that sits within inside the organization really tends to unlock a lot of value in data. Yeah, so you know, well, AJ, you can't be as a smaller company, all things to all people, but you, so you, the ecosystem is critical. You're working with AWS, you're working with Google, you got Red Hat, IBM as, as partners. What is attracting those folks to your ecosystem? And give us your thoughts on, on the importance of ecosystem. Yeah, that's, that's fundamental. I mean, when I came into Iotaho here as a CEO, one of the um, trends that I wanted us to, to be part of was being open, having an open architecture that allowed one thing that um, was close to my heart, which was as, a CEO, um, a CIO, where you've got a budget decision and you've already made investments into your organization. And some of those are pretty long-term bets. They could be going out five, 10 years sometimes with a, a CRM system, training up your people, getting everybody working together around a common 
business platform. What I wanted to ensure is that we could openly plug in using APIs that were available a lot of that sunk investment and the cost that has already gone into managing an organization's IT for business users to, to perform. So part of the reason why we've, we've been able to be successful with um, some of our partners like Google, AWS, and increasingly a number of technology players such as Red Hat, MongoDB is another one where we're doing a lot of good work with, um, and Snowflake here is, um, it's those investments have been made by the organizations that are our customers. And we want to make sure we're adding to that and they're leveraging the value that they've already committed to. Okay, so we've talked about kind of what it is and how it works. Now I want to get into the business impact. I, I would say what I would be looking for uh, from, mm -hmm. from this would be, can you help me lower my operational risk? Uh, I've got I've got tasks that I do. Many are sequential. Some are, are in parallel. But can you reduce my time to task? And can you help me reduce the labor intensity and ultimately my labor costs? So I can can I put those resources elsewhere? And and then ultimately I want to reduce the end to end cycle time, because that is going to drive telephone number ROI. So am I missing anything? Can you do those things? And maybe you could give us some examples of the the ROI and the business impact. Yeah, I mean, the ROI, David, is, is built upon on three things that I've, I've mentioned. It's a combination of you know, leveraging the, the existing investment with the existing estate, whether that's on Microsoft Azure or AWS or Google, IBM, um, and putting that to work because you know, the, the, the customers that we work with have, have made those choices. On top of that, it's, um, it's ensuring that we have um, got the automation that is working right down to the level of data at a column level or at a file level. So we don't deal with metadata. It's, it's being very specific to be at the most granular level. So as we run our processes and, and the automation, classification, tagging, applying policies from across different um, uh, compliance and regulatory needs that an organization has, to the data. Everything that then happens downstream from that is ready to serve a business outcome. It could be a customer who wants that experience on a mobile device, a tablet, or face-to-face -face within, uh, within a store. And being able to provision the right data and enable uh, our customers to do that for their customers with the right data that they can trust at the right time, just in that real time moment where a decision or an action is being expected, that's, um, that's driving the ROI to be in some cases 20X plus. And that's, that's really satisfying to see that, that kind of impact. It's, it's taking years down to months, and in many cases, months of work down to days, in some cases, hours to time to value. I'm, I'm impressed with how quickly out of the box with very little training a customer can pick up our tool and use features such as search, data discovery, knowledge graph, and um, identifying duplicates and uh, redundant data straight off the bat within hours. Well, it's why investors are interested in this space. I mean, they're looking for a big total available market uh, they're looking for a, a significant return. 10X is, you got to have 10X, 20X is better. Uh, so, so that's exciting. And obviously strong management and strong team. I want to mm -hmm. ask you about uh, people and culture. So you got people process technology. We've seen with this pandemic that the processes, you know, are really unpredictable. And the technology yeah. has to be able to adapt to any process, not the reverse. You can't force your process into some you know, static software. So that's very, very important. But at the end of the day, you got to get people on board. Uh, so I, I wonder if you could talk about this notion of, of culture and a data-driven culture. Yeah, that's, that's so important. I mean, uh, current times is forcing the necessity of the moment to, to adapt. But as we start to work our way through these changes and adapt um, and work with our customers to adapt to these changing economic times. 
what um, what we're seeing here is the ability to have um, the technology complement in in a really smart way what those business users and IT knowledge workers are looking to achieve together. So I'll give you an example. Uh, we have quite often with um, the data operations teams in the, the companies that we um, are partnering with um, have a lot of inbound inquiries on a day-to-day -day level of, I really need this set of data because I think it can help my data scientist run a particular model. Or now, what would happen if we combine these two different silos of data and get some enrichment going? Now, those requests you know, can sometimes take weeks to, to realize. What we've been able to do with the power of our search technology is to get those answers being addressed by the business users themselves. And now, with our, with our customers, they're coming to the data and IT folks saying, hey, I've now built something in a development environment. Why don't we see how that can scale up with these sets of data? I don't need you know, terabytes of it. I know exactly the columns and the features in the data that I'm going to use. And, and that cuts out a lot of wastage in time um, and cost to innovate. Well, that's huge. I mean, the whole notion of self-service and the lines of business actually feeling like they have ownership of the data uh, as opposed to you know, IT or some technology group owning the data because then you've got data quality issues or if it doesn't line up with their, their, their agenda, you're going to get a lot of finger pointing. So, so that is a really important you know, piece of it. I'll give you a last word, uh, AJ, okay. your, your final thoughts if you would. Yeah, I, we're, we're excited to be, be on this path and I think we've got um, some great customer examples here where we're having a real impact in in a really fast pace, whether it's helping them migrate to the cloud, helping them clean up their legacy data lake. And you know, quite often now, the, the conversation is around data quality. As more of the applications that we enable to work uh, more proficiently could be data, RPA, it could be robotic process automation. A lot of the APIs that are now available in the cloud platforms, a lot of those are dependent on data quality and you know, being able to automate for business users um, to take accountability of um, being able to, to look at the trend of their data quality over time and get those signals is, is really driving trust. And that trust in data is helping in turn um, the IT teams, the data operations team partner with do more and more quickly. So it comes back to culture, being able to apply the technology in such a way that it's visual, it's intuitive, and um, helping just like DevOps has with, uh, with IT, data ops, putting the intelligence in at the data level to, to drive that collaboration. We're excited. You know, you remind me of something. I, I, I lied, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to go yet, if that's okay. I know, I know we're tight on time, sure. but you mentioned a migration to the cloud and, I, and I'm thinking about the conversation with uh, Paula from Webster, Webster Bank. Well, you, migrations, yeah. migrations are, you know, they're, they're a nasty word for, <laughs> for organizations. So, our, and we saw this with Webster. How are you able mm -hmm. to help minimize the migration pain and, and, and why is that something that you guys are good at? Yeah, I mean, there are many large successful companies that we've, we've worked with. Webster's um, a great example where, you know, I'd like to give you the, the analogy where um, you've got a lot of white people in, in your teams, uh, if you're running a business as a CEO, and it's a bit like a, you know, a living, um, a living brain. But imagine if those different parts of your brain were not connected, that would um, certainly diminish how you're able to perform. So what we're seeing, particularly with migration, is where banks, retailers, manufacturers have grown over the last 10 years through acquisition and through di different initiatives to 
um, drive customer value. That sprawl in their data estate hasn't been fully dealt with. It's sometimes been a good thing to leave whatever you've acquired or created in situ, a side by side with that legacy mainframe and your, your Oracle ERP. And what we're able to do very quickly with that migration challenge is shine a light on all the different parts of, of data application at the column level or at the file level, if it's a data lake, and show an enterprise architect, a CDO, how everything's connected, where there may not be any documentation. The, the bright people that created some of those systems have long since moved on or retired or been promoted into to other roles. And within days, being able to automatically generate and keep refreshed the state of that data across that landscape and put it into context, then allows you to look at a migration from a confident that you're dealing with the fact, rather than what we've often seen in the past is teams of consultants and, and business analysts and data analysts spend months getting a, an approximation and, and a good idea of what it could be in the current state and try their very best to map that to the future target state. Now with our Tahoe being able to run those processes within hours of getting started and um, build that picture, visualize that picture and bring it to life. You know, the, the ROI starts off the bat with finding data that should have been deleted, data that there's copies of, and being able to allow the, the architect, whether it's you know, working on GCP or in migration to any other cloud such as AWS, or a multi-cloud landscape quite often now. We're yeah, seeing, that vis yeah. That visibility is key to sort of reducing operational risk, giving people confidence that they can, they can move forward at, and being able to do that and update that on an ongoing basis uh, means you can scale. AJ Vahora, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your, your insights and your experiences. Great to have you. Thank you, David. Look forward to talking again. All the best. All right, and keep, keep it right there, everybody. We're here with Data Automated on theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante, and we'll be right back. Right, short break.